So with somebody like you that went through a, your career and did, did something, did improv, did SNL, had a very successful um, on-camera career, which is still going, mm -hmm. what inside of you gave you the, made, made you brave enough or want to step outside your box, step outside the box enough to, uh, to take up stand-up comedy at that oh, point yeah. in your career? Because a lot of people start with a stand-up and then get into the other things, but right. you've done all these things, had all the success, and then it's like, I want to challenge myself and do something brand new. Yeah. Well, it mainly came from, not, from having ideas comedically and not having any way to do it. Um, and I started doing improv again, sort of after I got divorced. And I went through, I was really not a happy person. I was kind of depressed and stuff. And then a friend of mine just started saying, go and do improv, go hang out with people that you know from Chicago. And, mm -hmm. and so I started going to UCB and the um, Upright Citizens Brigade, which is in LA, and uh, the Improv Olympic in LA. And I started hanging out with people and then started doing improv again and started looking forward to it. And then, but the thing was, I realized that like, I couldn't put ideas that I had during the week into improv because that's not what improv is, you know? Um, and so I thought, well, I should start, you know, start either doing like one man show things or like just doing things where I can just get ideas out there. Mm -hmm. And that was basically the inspiration behind it. And I sort of put together a show that was a combination of those things in the beginning, I would come out, I had two friends, Joe Canale and Brad Morris, and we would improvise together as, as three people. But before the show started, I would come out and, and, and talk to the audience, and I would have prepared jokes or things mm -hmm. I thought about during the week. And this was in Chicago at the Improv Olympic, so people paid two bucks to come in and watch it. It wasn't, there wasn't like a high pressure thing of mm -hmm. like, this show better be great, you know. Um, and then over a period of like a couple years, I went from having no material to having like 20 minutes. And then I kept doing open mics and I kept writing and trying to come up with other stuff. And then before I knew it, I had 45 minutes and I didn't need those other two guys. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so I fired them and I started going out on my own. Where does it rank as far as like things you like to do, like improv, comedy, acting? The, it, I don't know if there's a rank. I think at any time they, each of them um, is, as rewarding as the other. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm doing <clears throat> improv, when I'm working with really funny people and we're all into it and there's like this magical sort of thing when it's good because it's all of us just making this up and, and making it happen together. And the audience is in on it and it's really magical and great. And there's times when I'm doing stand up where the, sh the material is working, the audience is great. Um, I go off and talk about other things and the audience is with me and I feel like, you know, this is the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, but I never get that feeling when I'm doing film or TV things. It's always, I mean, I enjoy it and yeah. it's like, you have moments of like, oh, I said everything right and I think they got the funny that they mm -hmm. wanted to get. But there's never that moment of like, you know, the live satisfaction media. or reaction mm -hmm. from people because even when you're filming stuff like people don't the crew won't laugh until they say cut you know um, and then you know like oh they they like that and they mm -hmm. held out for it but the re the live reaction from the audiences um when you're doing improv or stand up is just you feel you feel good 